power amplifiers. We know that an amplifier is a device which increases a particular quantity. For example, the voltage amplifier. In case of a voltage amplifier, if we apply a small amount of voltage at the input of the amplifier, then the voltage amplifier will enhance its level and at the output we will get large amount of voltage. So this is the overall definition of a voltage amplifier. Now we are dealing with power amplifiers. As the name indicates, power amplifiers are the amplifiers that enhance the applied power. So we can say that if we are applying small amount of power at the input of the power amplifier, then at the output, we will get a large amount of power. As we know that power is a multiplication of voltage and current. So if we want to increase the level of power, then we will have to increase voltage as well as current in the device. Or in other words, we can say that power amplifier increases the voltage as well as applied current. In this manner, the power amplifiers increase the applied power and we are getting a large amount of power at the output. Now, as we can see here, an amplifier that produces large amount of power at the output to operate high power devices like motor, CRO, loudspeaker, etc. These are the devices, for example, the power motor or cathode tray oscilloscope or loudspeaker, these are high power devices. It means that we need high power to run these devices. And uh, because they have very low resistance, so they draw a large amount of current from the preceding stages. When they draw a large amount of current, it means that we need uh, heavy power to operate them. Therefore, in order to operate these devices, high power devices, we have to connect a power amplifier in the stage preceding to these high power devices normally connected as the last stage of multi-stage electronic system. These power amplifiers are normally connected in the final stage of the multi-stage electronic system. It means that, for example, we have taken public address system. The public address system which we normally use in large gatherings. In public address system, what are the main components. The first component is the microphone. Microphone which is used by the speaker. It converts the sound energy into electrical energy. Once the sound energy is converted into electrical energy, it is uh, of very low voltage or the voltage is very low of millivolt. So first we have to increase the voltage level. So after converting it into uh, electrical signal, we use the voltage amplifiers, multi-stage voltage amplifiers. Once the voltage comes to a proper level or to a uh, uh, appropriate level, then we need to increase the power. So after multi-stage voltage amplifiers, we connect uh, the uh, power amplifier which amplifies the overall power and once we get the uh, uh, amount of uh, sufficient power at the output of power amplifier then we connect the high power device like motor CRO 
etc but as we are considering the public address system so in this case uh, at the output of the power amplifier we will connect loudspeaker and loudspeaker converts the electrical energy back to sound energy in this uh, manner uh, we can conclude that uh, the power amplifiers are used at the final stage of a multi-stage electronic system power amplifiers are designed to operate high power devices which draw large current from the preceding stages as i have already mentioned high power devices have extremely low resistance due to heavy current required Uh, as we know that high power devices like motors cro etc they are uh, low resistance devices therefore they draw heavy current and in order to uh, supply heavy current we have to use the power amplifier the power amplifiers are also called large signal amplifiers as they utilize a large portion of the load line if we study amplifiers then we know that we uh, are dealing with the load line uh, load line is this is the uh, graph uh, which which is uh, showing the variation of voltage and current and uh, the linear equation is uh, shown by the straight line and on this straight line there are infinite number of combinations of current and voltage for which the transistor will be in the operating uh, mode there are number of our infinite number of uh, points but the actual point for example this is the actual point at which the uh, transistor is operating this point is called the q point or the quiescent point this is the dc uh, for example when we are considering only the dc values then this is the a position of the q point but when we are applying ac signal at the input then the value of applied voltage and correspondingly the current will also vary in the form of ac signal so the current uh, current will uh, vary and uh, voltage will also vary this is the variation of current and this is the we are considering the uh, 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 collector current so this is the variation of collector current and this is the variation of collector voltage and the q point uh, also moves along the load line so this is the variation uh, of the or the movement of the q point on the load line since the current is also very large and the voltage is also very large for the power amplifier therefore uh, the q point uh, moves on a large portion of the load line hence they are uh, power amplifiers are also called uh, large signal amplifiers now at the stage we are acquainted with two types of important amplifiers the voltage amplifier and the power amplifier in the previous slide we have considered the main differences between the voltage and the power amplifier the basic differences now we will consider the differences between these two types of amplifiers in somewhat details the first point is for voltage amplifier the basic requirement is to give a large value of voltage gain we know that normally the voltage gain of an amplifier is denoted by the letter av av is the voltage gain and it is equal to the output voltage divided by the input voltage it is the ratio of output voltage and input voltage the larger value of the voltage gain means the quality of the amplifier of the voltage amplifier is good now we are normally we consider when we uh, take different types of configurations then the 
most uh, beneficial or most advantageous uh, configuration of uh, a transistor for an amplifier is common emitter configuration. Uh, the, as a student of electronics, you all must be knowing that uh, the common emitter configuration is normally used when we are designing an amplifier. For the <clears throat> common emitter uh, configuration in the amplifier, the output uh, uh, voltage will be the collector voltage. And if the collector current is IC, and the collector resistance is RC, then the collector voltage or the output voltage will be IC multiplied by RC. This is the output voltage. And for common emitter configuration, the input voltage will be or the input current because the input terminal will be the base terminal. So uh, the input current will be the base current that is IB. And suppose the uh, the uh, input resistance uh, is R in, then it is I B multiplied by R in. So this is the expression for the voltage uh, gain of a voltage amplifier in common emitter configuration. And we know that for common uh, emitter configuration, the ratio of I C and I B, that is I C upon I B is equal to beta, that is the current gain. It is a very common uh, quantity for uh, uh, a common emitter configuration. It is beta into RC divided by Rn. This is the expression for the voltage gain of a voltage amplifier. Now come to the power amplifier. For power amplifier, we don't consider voltage gain because the main aim of a power amplifier is to increase or enhance power. So we talk in terms of power gain. So the power gain will be the ratio of output power and input power. As the output power, uh, since we are considering at the output, the collector terminal, so an output is I, I square multiplied by resistance. Therefore, the output power will be IC square multiplied by RC divided by the input current is IB. Therefore, the input power is IB square multiplied by RN. Now, IC square upon IB square is beta square multiplied by RC upon RN. So, this is the expression for power gain. Now, again come to voltage amplifier. <coughs> The main aim of a voltage amplifier is to have a high value of AB. In this point, we have uh, calculated the voltage gain as beta multiplied by RC divided by RN. Since the voltage gain is directly proportional to uh, beta, therefore for uh, a voltage amplifier uh, to have a large, a large value of voltage gain, the value of beta, that is a current gain in common configuration, common emitter configuration should be very high because AB is directly proportional to beta. Therefore, and beta is a quantity which is an inherent property of a transistor. And when we go and purchase a transistor, then all the values are given in the manual. So we will see that uh, what is the value of beta for that particular transistor. So if we are going to make a, uh, a voltage amplifier, then we, we should choose uh, a transistor whose beta is greater than 100. Then it will, it will uh, provide us a uh, good voltage amplifier. For power amplifier, since uh, the power gain is proportional to beta square, so if we are having a transistor of very high beta, for example, beta greater than 100, then nothing like that because the power gain will be naturally very high. But, but there is a disadvantage of taking beta very high for power amplifier because 
what happens when beta is very high suppose more than 100 or more than 200 then the base will be very thin because for the transistors to have a large uh, value of beta the portion of base should be very thin so that the collector current is very high uh, in comparison to base current okay that is the output uh, beta is a ratio of uh, ic and ib therefore ib should be very um, small uh, and in order to have small value of ib the uh, thickness of base uh, portion should be very uh, thin so if we are uh, taking a transistor which has uh, uh, which is having a value of beta very uh, high then the base uh, uh, is uh, to be a uh, thin to be very thin uh, but uh, it this kind of transistor which we are using in power amplifier uh, will have to uh, tolerate a large amount of power it has to bear a large amount of power so if the base is too thin then it will burn out so we can uh, because we are uh, dealing with power amplifier and the power gain is proportional to beta square since it is beta square so if we take a transistor with comparatively lower beta that is 20 to 30 then both the purposes will be solved that is power gain will be high because it is beta square if we are taking beta as 20 then beta square will be 400 and the second purpose that is the base should be comparatively thick to bear the high amount of power that purpose will also be solved so safely we can use a transistor for which beta is between 20 and 50 again come to voltage amplifier av is uh, proportional to rc from this expression we can see that uh, the value of av is uh, directly proportional to rc that is the collector resistance therefore the output resistance uh, or the uh, load resistance should be large or the output resistance of the uh, voltage amplifier should be large so that we can get a high value of voltage gain in the case of power amplifier in this case also the power gain is proportional to rc but what happens if we take a large value of rc then the power gain will be no doubt it will be high because it is directly proportional to rc but the power amplifier is going to operate high power device and we know that the high power device uh, draws a large amount of current it means that its resistance is very low so if the power amplifier is operating a high power device whose resistance is very low so the output resistance of power amplifier should also be low in order to get impedance matching otherwise there will not be a, a complete power transfer from power amplifier to the output device therefore in order to choose the value of output resistance we will have to see the uh, resistance or impedance of the device which we are going to operate uh, with the help of the power amplifier so this must be the uh, main deciding factor uh, for taking the value of output uh, resistance of uh, the power amplifier in voltage amplifier if we are taking uh, uh, multi-stage amplifiers then between two um, stages we use rc coupling and for power amplifier we use transformer coupling in case of voltage amplifier the transistors are of small size because the base is to be thin so that beta will be very large so the transistors of small size are employed while in power amplifier the transistors ha have to be of big size because they have to 
bear a large amount of power and uh, if the transistor uh, are very uh, thin and delicate and the base is very thin then they will burn out so the transistors uh, employed for the power amplifiers have to be big in size and such type of transistors are called power transistors there is a very interesting fact related with the power amplifiers normally we say that the voltage amplifier increases or amplifies the input voltage and gives us the large amount of uh, output voltage for power amplifiers we can safely say that the power amplifiers do not amplify power it does not mean that we are applying small amount of power and the power amplifier is enhancing the power and giving us a large amount of power but what power amplifiers actually do they convert the dc power taken from the dc supply into ac power they are not increasing the input ac power they are converting the dc power from the power supply into a large <clears throat> amount of ac power at the output therefore the power amplifiers may be uh, named as power converters they are converters of power from dc power to ac power and what is the role of the ac signal the role of the ac signal is that it decides the nature and type of the output power that is what will be the frequency of the output of the signal and uh, what is the um, uh, type of the whether it is a sine wave or it is a square wave such characteristics are decided by the input ac signal now the power amplifiers may be divided into different categories according to the uh requirements and uh, there are several factors uh, which um, uh, 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 which give us the reason to decide an amplifier for a particular purpose and uh, on the basis of uh, those requirements the power amplifiers are divided into different categories and the criteria of classification of the power amplifiers is the biasing condition that is the position of q point the position of q point on the load line of the amplifier and the amplitude of the input signal two things that is the first is the position of q point on the load line and the second is the amplitude of the input signal uh, decide what is the class of the amplifier on the basis of the position of q point and amplitude of the input signal power amplifiers are divided into different categories the first category is class a amplifier in this case the q point and the input signal are in such a state that output current flows for the entire cycle of the input signal it means that if we are applying a full Uh, sine wave at the input of the power uh, amplifier then at the output of the amplifier will also contain full sine wave that is the output current is flowing for the entire cycle of the input signal that is the transistor will operate for the complete cycle of the input voltage in class b amplifier the q point and the input signal are so adjusted that the output current flows for one half cycle that is 180 degree of the input signal uh, the q point and the input signal are so adjusted that only for one half cycle of the input signal the output current will flow and for the other half cycle it will the transistor will remain inoperative it means that in the output signal we will either uh, get positive half cycle or 
negative half cycle. The other half cycle will be removed. This is class B amplifier. There are several advantages and disadvantages related with these different categories of amplifiers. Now class C amplifier. In this uh, category, the Q point and input signal are so adjusted that the output current flows for less than half cycle of the input signal. It means that we are getting only a thin pulse of current at the output or the output signal is just like a thin pulse and uh, it this kind of uh, power amplifier also has its uses in different kind of um, electronic devices. Now the fourth uh, category is class AB amplifier. In this case, as the name suggests, it is a combination of class A and class B amplifiers. Uh, the Q point and the input signal are uh, so adjusted uh, or they are, uh, uh, that position and value are so uh, adjusted that uh, the the output current uh, flows for more than a half cycle and less than full cycle of the input signal. It is evident from the definition that it will be more than half cycle and less than uh, full cycle. So the whole of positive cycle will be there and only a part of a negative cycle will be there. So these are the four types of power amplifiers. This figure illustrates the uh, output signal of different kinds of power amplifiers. As in the previous uh, slide, the different classes of power amplifiers were defined and described. And uh, in this slide, uh, the uh, with the help of the figure, the output signal is shown. For the class A amplifier, this is the output signal. It means that the output signal is uh, containing the negative cycle as well as the positive cycle. That is the Q point and amplitude of the signal are so adjusted that the output current flows for the complete cycle of the input signal. For class B amplifier, we are getting only one half cycle and the other half cycle will be totally Remove. That is the conduction angle is only 180 degree. For class AB amplifier, the output current flows for more than half cycle. It is more than half cycle, uh, uh, but uh, less than full cycle. So this is the uh, 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 this is the output signal of uh, class AB amplifier. For class C amplifier the conduction of the transistor or the output current will flow for less than half cycle of the input signal. So these are the different types of signals which we are getting at the output of different kinds of power amplifiers. This figure shows the socket diagram of class A amplifier. If we go into the details of uh, the circuit, we can see that the circuit is just like that of a simple amplifier, a simple uh, voltage amplifier in co a common emitter configuration. There is no special uh, kind of alteration, but we are saying that this is class A power amplifier. What makes it class A power amplifier is that first we will have to take the power transistor because the transistor will have to uh, handle large amount of current and large amount of power. So the basic thing which we will have to consider is that the transistor we are taking is of big size of uh, beta uh, in the range 20 to 50 and uh, uh, that kind of transistor is called the power transistor. The second thing is that we have to take such electronic components that the uh, current, the output current is 
large. We have to take the values in, su in such a manner. The third thing is that we are, since we are going to design class A amplifier, therefore the condition should be that the Q point and the uh, input signal are so adjusted that the output current flows for the entire uh, uh, entire cycle of the input signal. Okay, there is a, in the entire signal the output current should be flowing. And this condition is met only if the Q point is uh, placed at the or it is chosen at the midpoint of the load line. This is the load line. You must be knowing that this, uh, in the graph, this is the graphical representation uh, of variation of uh, collector current on the Y axis. We are taking the collector current and uh, the X axis we are taking the uh, collector and uh, uh, emitter voltage that is a voltage between collector and emitter and uh, the variation is in the form of a, a straight line which is called load line and as in the previous uh, slide uh, I described that there are uh, infinite number of points or combinations uh, lying on the load line for which the transistor will be in the operating mode but q point is the actual point at which the transistor is working so the q point is at the midpoint what happens when the q point is at midpoint when this is the value of uh, or the position of q point for dc values when we have not uh, applied the uh, AC signal but when AC signal is uh, applied at the input this is the input signal which we are applying at the input then the Q point will uh, move along the load line when the positive half is uh, being applied then the Q point will move upwards and when the negative um, uh, circle is being applied then the Q point will move downwards since the Q point, the transistor will operate uh, till the Q point is moving along the, uh, the Q point is uh, uh, moving uh, along the line. It does not uh, move out of or the value of IC does not cross this point and the value of VC does not uh, cross uh, this end point. If it remains in the between uh, in between these two points, then the transistor will be in the operating condition. So when the Q point is moving from this point to this point and from this point to this point, then the uh, uh, collector current will uh, will will be flowing like this. This is the variation of collector current, and this is the variation of the output voltage. That is the entire sine wave we are getting at the output. But in case the signal, the value of the signal exceeds the value, for, for example, the signal goes out of uh, this point like this. It goes out of this like this and in the negative half it goes like this. Then in that particular case, the positive half uh, a portion of the positive half and the portion of, uh, of the negative half will be uh, will be curtailed or it will be cut off. So we have to make sure that the uh, input signal will uh, will have to be of such uh, size that the position of the Q point ensures that the, the signal does not go beyond the saturation point and cutoff point of the load line. So if these conditions are satisfied, then it, this circuit becomes the circuit of a class A power amplifier. Uh, if uh, we see them in details, uh, if we see the circuit diagram, then this is simple voltage amplifier in common emitter configuration. R1 and R2 are potential divide 
that uh, bias uh, because um, uh, as you must have uh, studied the, the, the uh, biasing circuits uh, just to uh, give the uh, stability to the uh, Q point uh, to ensure the stable uh, Q point we have to use biasing circuits and a combination of R1 and R2 is providing uh, potential divider bias to the transistor. RL is the load resistance and RE uh, uh, and uh, CE. This is also a combination for the uh, for stabilizing the uh, Q point of the transistor. So these are the basic things and uh, is the circuit of uh, class A power amplifier. These points I have already discussed in the previous uh, slide. If the input signal exceeds a certain limit, the Q point variation exceeds the limit of load line and class A condition is violated. Uh, so we have to take uh, input signal of such a size that the Q point does not go beyond the saturation point and the cutoff point. So these are the uh, points which have been uh, previously discussed. Efficiency of a power amplifier. Now the main characteristics of a power amplifier are uh, its uh, efficiency, how much power, how much uh, as uh, I have already told you that uh, power amplifier does not amplify, uh, amplify power but it, uh, it is a sort of uh, power converter. It converts DC power into AC power. So we have to consider how efficiently a power amplifier is converting the DC power into AC power. The efficiency will be high if uh, the power amplifier is taking small amount of DC power and con converting it to high amount of uh, 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 AC power. So all this depends upon the uh, efficiency of the power amplifier. But it cannot be more than 100% because uh, the, we cannot generate power with the help of power amplifier. We, we can only convert it. Okay, So within 100%, how much efficiency we are getting from uh, the power amplifier, we will discuss that. Since we are, uh, there are two types of efficiencies for a power amplifier. The first type is overall efficiency. It is uh, denoted by the uh, notation eta O, overall efficiency means eta O. It is the ratio of AC power delivered by the power amplifier to the load and the total DC power supplied by the DC source. This is the uh, overall efficiency. And the maximum value of overall efficiency for class A amplifier is only 25%. For the total amount of DC power drawn from the DC supply, class A power amplifier can convert only 25% of that power into AC power. So we can say that in the in terms of uh, overall efficiency, uh, the class A power amplifier is not much efficient because the rest amount of power has been wasted. The second um, uh, term is collector efficiency. This is, a, uh, this is also a term which defines the efficiency in another uh, terms. Uh, this is uh, denoted by uh, eta C and it is a ratio of AC power delivered to the load uh, uh, and uh, DC power supplied by DC source to the transistor only. In the previous case, we have taken the total DC power supplied by the DC source because the DC power which we are taking from the DC uh, source, it is uh, distributed uh, between the re resistor uh, which is uh, present between the uh, DC source and the transistor and several other things are also there. And uh, But uh, in this case, in the case of collector efficiency, we are are considering the DC power which is supplied by the DC source to the transistor 
only and for the maximum value of um, collector efficiency for class A amplifier is 50%. It means that the total uh, DC power which has been transferred to the transistor, it's 50% or half of that power is being converted into AC power by the pa uh, class A power amplifier. 